Hello everyone, welcome to an overview of Ecosystem Building Designer Connect Edition. My name is Shatsad Althar. It's great to have you all in the session today. We'll have a brief 50 minutes discussion on this topic and I'll try to keep it as brief as possible. And if you have any questions, please write it down in the comment section. So let's start. First, let's see a few examples of different projects completed with the help of Ecosystem Building Designer. This is the Immersion College in Los Angeles by Morphosis Architects. The applications used here are Ecosystem Building Designer, Generative Components, MicroStation, Navigator, and ProjectWise. This is a Twin Tower building in Yunchuan, China by John Portman and Associates. And the applications used here are Ecosystem Building Designer and Generative Components. This is the new midfield terminal building Abu Dhabi International Airport by Consolidated Contractors Company and they have used an array of different software for this project which includes Bentley products like Ecosystem Building Designer, MicroStation, ProjectWise, Inroads and Bentley Navigator. This is the China Shipbuilding and DRI Engineering in Shanghai, China and the applications used here are Ecosystem Building Designer, MicroStation, Navigator, ProjectWise, Bentley Raceways, Cable Management and LuminarT for the rich and vivid landscape rendering. So what is Ecosystem Building Designer? Ecosystem Building Designer has been developed specifically for architecture, engineering, construction and owner-operated professionals. Our vision for this product is to extend CAD to BIM with engineering analysis, simulation, and design insights. Ecosystem Building Designer is Bentley's one-stop solution for building design. It combines four building engineering disciplines in one application. It's not just about architecture, but also includes tools for structural, mechanical, and electrical system design. The data-rich models can be shared by industry standard exchange formats for construction planning and facility operations. Ecosystem Building Designer Connect Edition also provides integration with MicroStation, does clash detection, integrates with Luxology, integrates with generative components and conceptual modeling. Product companion features extends the core application capabilities. These includes Descartes to integrate reality models, and generative components for computational design. Bentley LuminarT is a companion application for stunning visualizations to bring your designs to life. Ecosystem Building Designer has a vast number of datasets available, namely US Metric and Imperial, United Kingdom, Denmark, Sweden, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Neutral Metric, Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, and China. Ecosystem Building Designer is also available in six different languages. These are English, Chinese Simplified, French, German, Italian, and Spanish. Here we can see a few examples of different companies like EIPM of Barcelona who say that BIM as a more intuitive workflow has contributed to increase productivity and reliability of any project. Another highlight of Bentley application is that it shares a common platform and data format, the DGN file format, where you can open any Bentley file on any Bentley application, making it easier for any Bentley user to work in a multidisciplinary environment. As long as there are large and complex projects that require multidisciplines and specialists, there would always be a need for Ecosystem Building Designer Connect Edition. Today we'll be discussing on the following topics. Number one, simplify the design. Number two, incorporate existing reality. Number three, architectural design. Number four, integration with computational design. Number five, structural design. Number six, MEP design. Number seven, data management and reporting. Number eight, interoperability. Number nine, visualization. And number 10, connected environment. So let's see how, by using the most simple CAD tools, Ecosim, can help you simplify the design of a building. Users would already know how simple the 3D CAD tools are. Add to that tools that would help you add BIM information into your design. Although you have such intuitive tools to create your design, along with Ecosim, you'll receive a huge library of pre-designed 3D models of different components like chairs, windows, columns, beams, cooling towers, VAVs, AHUs, and also fittings like T's, bends, etc., which confirm to predefined catalogs. With Thaker Symbol Building Designer, you'll also receive a huge library of predesigned electrical symbols as well. One of the most important parts of Ecosim Building Designer modeling is that it has a capability of a federated workflow. 
This is a workflow where different designers can work on different parts of a project and then combine them all into one master project which will have all the design and BIM data associated in it. As I've said, one of the most important parts of Ecosim Building Designer Modeling is that it has a capability of a federated workflow. You can share the file with anyone and work in parallel. You will also be able to see the updates made in real time in reference to models. In the model that you can see on your screen, there are different floors which has been taken into the main model as different references. You can turn them on or off as per your requirement. Now we will discuss how Ecosim Building Designer enables multidiscipline teams to incorporate existing site conditions using context capture and point clouds as a context for your design. Reality modeling enables teams to rapidly develop and present project scenarios while interoperating with other team members involved in different types of modeling throughout the life cycle of the project. Reality modeling can include many different data types. Project teams often rely on point clouds, 3D images and reality meshes as well as traditional imagery like aerial and satellite photography. To produce complete, compelling and realistic models, digital nature can be added to complement the design models with dynamic aspects of the design like moving people, traffic, vegetation and weather. With support for raster data, point clouds and 3MX reality mesh formats, Bentley Solution enables the immersive integration of any reality modeling data with design, construction and operation models. This common modeling environment enables users to design in context, supporting better decision making and enabling clearer communication of design intent to team members and clients. This is an example of the use of reality modeling in an urban context. The use of reality modeling to help assess the impact and to simulate the construction of a building. By immersing the design model within the environmental context, we were able to clearly visualize and assess the impact on the skyline, sight lines, solar shading and many other factors related to the new building. This enabled teams to efficiently and clearly communicate with the city and the people involved in the project to ensure a clear understanding of what the design would really look like. There is a built-in geo-coordination so you can easily get your BIM model located on Earth and even interface with other applications like Google Earth, locate the file spatially within the real-world context and choose from hundreds of coordinate systems. You can export your model to Google Earth or import Google Earth Terrain into Ecosim Building Designer. Now let's see how easily Ecosim Building Designer can convert 2D CAD data into 3D BIM models and many more functions in the architectural design. This is a hand sketch drawing and we have converted this to a 3D BIM space model. Here you can see that we have loaded the sheet in Ecosim Building Designer and the only other thing needed is an area statement sheet. Now let's see an example on how we can change 2D data into 3D data as discussed earlier. As you can see, I have already imported the sketch file into Ecosim Building Designer and I have also imported the Excel file through Space Planner Import Wizard inside Space Planning from Program Dialog. Let's select the Retail Sales Area space and then with the help of Play Space option, we will place it inside our total space area allotted for the shop. Once that is done, I would like to place another sales area, which is the bakery, and place it into the shop. Now to do that, I will change the length and the width as per my requirement and once that is done, I will place it into the shop. Now if I zoom into a particular place and on top of this area, you can see that the program area and the actual area of the space is provided. Now if I change the space, you can see the, that the actual area changes. Now let's start by taking a look at some of the architectural tools. Ecosim Building Designer has space planning tools that allow you to import spaces from room and area data in an Excel spreadsheet and track those spaces throughout the life of the project. Ecosim Building Designer includes all the same 3D modeling tools that are found in MicroStation like Push, Pull, Solid and Surface Modeling making it possible to create any form at a conceptual design stage. And of course libraries of parametric building content like walls, slabs and roofs, doors, windows and curtain walls, stairs and handrails and in addition there are also tools for FFNE content like casework, equipment and furniture and all these objects are intelligent and can be tagged and scheduled based on the information in the model. 
Ecosim can use RFA in a version agnostic way. It has the biggest catalog of manufacturing content. This is an example which shows how to create walls with ease from spaces. Here we are selecting walls and then we set our place option to place from space. Then if we click on any type of space, it will create a wall surrounding that space. We can move any wall just for say due to a revision and the space and the area changes as well. As you can see when I move the wall, the space and the area changes as well. Now we'd like to add in some spaces in the model with the space option and can fill up any undefined space with the flood method and assign a number to it. Now we want to assign a boundary wall for the entire building. To do that, I will select wall and I will select the default exterior wall and I will use my place option to place from element and I will select the element and you can see that the wall will be placed. Now we can select the wall for the entire space and can change this wall from a simple wall to a compound wall with great ease. To do that I select the wall and I go to modify instance data and from the change wall type window I change the type of the wall which is now in this case is default exterior wall but I will select one of the example compound walls and I provide the data required click on OK and you can see that the walls will be changed to a compound wall. Ecosim handles changes excellently. It has the flexibility to change or manage change which is very important in the entire workflow of a project in a holistic way. There is a great integration of Ecosim with computational design which I'll now discuss with you in this section. This underground train station uses both Generative Components and Ecosim Building Designer. Generative Components was used to drive the roof geometry. Generative Components model can be used to drive geometrical setout and fabrication of roof components. Generative Components was able to set out the coordinates of the roof geometry to Excel. An iModel transform was then used to combine the objects with the information generated to Excel. There are two reasons for using Generative Components to create the roof. Firstly, the roof form required tweaking and changing in order to get the geometry right and secondly, the structural members and panel can be created far more accurately and efficiently by creating relationships between the geometry and the construction elements. There are a high number of nodes that are available to create geometry with generative components, but when generative components is installed on top of Ecosim Building Designer, the Ecosim node types are also available for the user. This is an example which shows how we use generative components for designing a complex roof structure. The profile here is managed with the law curve and the variables are controlling the rules to define elements generation like number of timber posts, length of the posts, etc. In this section, I will show you how you can simplify your structural design by using Ecosim Building Designer. In this example, I start with a grid. As you can see, you can add orthogonal, radial, or you can even sketch two axis or three axis grids. Now each of the grids that you add will have some grid system settings that you can provide. Each of the grids will also have a start flow and an end flow, which means all the flows between those two flows, including those two flows, will have that grid applied. Now if I go to the start flow of that grid that I've created, you can see that the grid is there. Now let's play some isolated footings and to do that I'll be going to Concrete Pier. In the Place Concrete Pier tool, I'll first provide the section name. To do that, I select Library, I provide the code, type and the section. Now if I scroll down, you can see that I have some structural data that I need to provide, which is already associated with this particular section, but I can provide if I want. Now I provide the length to be 2 feet and place by grid. Now if I select the grid and click on any data point, you can see that all the intersection points of the grid is placed with the footing of the section that I have selected of height 2 feet. Now by using the same method, I'd like to place some concrete columns on top of these concrete piers. Now to do that, I go to the concrete column tool. In the place concrete column dialog, if I scroll up, you can see I need to provide the section. Once I provide the section, and to do that, I go to library, I provide the code, type and section, and once that is done, I'll provide the length and the place by option. Now if I select the grid and I click on any data point, you can see by the same method, I can provide a number of columns on top of the footings. 
Now I'd like to provide a few number of concrete beams. To do that, I go to the Place Concrete Beam tool. And inside that, you can see there are various kind of beams that I can provide, but I'll be providing a simple beam. And I'll be providing a section. And to do that, as I've done previously, I'll do the same method. I'll select the library and the section. And you can see that I can also provide the structural data, but I'll keep it as is. Now I'll go to the correct flow level where I have to provide the beams. And now I'll be using the two points method and I'll keep drawing the beams in the two point method. So as you can see, this is how you can easily create a structural concrete frame by using Acosim Building Designer. Now I'll show you another method by which you can place a number of secondary beams between two beams along their length without having to calculate the center to center distance or spacing between each of them. To do this, I go to Place Concrete Framing and I select the library in the same manner that I have done previously. Now if I scroll down, you can see that I need to provide the structural data. In this case, the mark is not provided, so I'll be providing the mark as B2. And you can see the status is also not provided. I'll provide the status as new. Now, I'll choose the placement method, which is the number of members, and the number of members is 3. Now, if I select two beams, you can see I'll be placing three beams between two beams along the length without having to calculate the center-to-center -center distance or spacing. Now let's go through another workflow showing the benefit of Ecosim Building Designer. This is what we like to call Glocal. Say for example I've used the US dataset but I would like to place a steel column from other code, say for example Corian. To do that I select Corian XML and I incorporate that into my project. Once that is done I would like to go to the Place Steel Column tool. And when inside that, if I go to the section name, you can see that within the library, I do have the Korean code available. Now I can select the code, add the type and the section from the Korean code. Now I can place a section from the Korean code in my project. In this scenario, you work globally, even sitting in your locality. Now let's see how Ecosim Building Designer can help you in your MEP design. In this example, I've used a predefined HU and opened it in the editing window. In a similar manner, you can create your own custom HUs easily. Now, if I select an HU inside the editing window, you can see that for each of the selected HUs, there are different modules. And for each of the selected modules, there are different dimensions. So by changing the dimensions, I can create my own custom HUs. So by using the same method, you can create your own custom HUs or you can start from scratch. Acosm delivers out of the box huge catalog and you can obviously add to that catalog or edit the catalog. Acosm in many ways can help you simplify the HVAC design of a building. Here you can see how easy it is to draw a duct by using Acosm Building Designer. All you need to do is provide the direction and enter the length and that's it. The duct will be drawn. You can also click on any data point to create a duct. You can also use different views to draw the ducts more intuitively. In this example that you see on your screen, I have used view 2 to draw the ducts from the top view without having to exit the tool. Now, if you are wondering how to control the bends and the branchings while drawing ducts like that, then let me tell you that this can be controlled by the auto-fitting preferences as shown in here. In this auto-fitting preferences window, you can see that you have preferences for elbow, branch, and transition. Now, a grill from the delivered dataset is used and placed on the duct. You can see that there are many pre-designed 3D models of air terminals that are available with the delivered dataset, but I will be placing this particular grill on this duct. Before placing this grill though, I would like to resize it rather than using the size of the pre-designed model. To do that, I'll select the grill and I'll scroll down the Place Component dialog and you can see that I can resize the grill from here. Now when I resize the grill, you can see that the size of the grill changes in the preview window as well. After having it resized according to my requirement, I would choose the duct, then I'd choose the distance of the grill from the end of the duct and then the side I want to place it on. The grill will be placed. You can also have the air terminals placed first and then connect the duct with them by using the device hookup tool. You can also connect multiple air terminals with a particular duct by using the fence selection method and the device hookup tool, as shown in here. I selected both the air terminals using the fence selection method and have used the device hookup tool and I have selected the fence. 
There is another concept that ACASM uses, which is the single line mode. When you draw ducts, those ducts will be in a single line mode. But remember, this is only the graphics. The physical and logical connections, the bends and the T's and everything and every data is retained for that particular duct. I will show you in a bit that every data is retained for the duct. As you can see on your screen, the ducts that I'm drawing is in a single line mode. Even the connections are made with the air terminals and the branches of the duct are also in single line mode with some symbols. Now let's move on to the plumbing side. As you can see it's same as ducting but there is a little difference. The difference is that it will be with a number of catalogs which will have different specifications. Each of those pipes or pipe accessories will confirm to those predefined catalogs. You can also create your own catalogs or edit them to your requirement. You do have different components like plumbing fixtures and fire resistant equipment and all of these confirm to those predefined catalogs. Now there is another feature of Ecosim that is the duct system sizing. This will help you to size your duct system and do the duct sizing on the go. Here I have loaded the system and I'll just provide the ends. In this case N1 is fresh air and N2 is return air and N3 is supply air. Now I will select the exact end I would need to do the duct sizing for, which is the supply air. And you'll see within a few moments the duct sizing is being done by Ecosim Building Designer for you. Once you click OK, the duct sizing section summary will be provided to you. You can export this duct sizing summary in form of a report and you can also generate ASHRAE report from this. For example, I can go to reports here and can select ASHRAE and you will generate reports in a few moments. You will be provided with a total pressure loss calculation by sections and a total loss coefficient summary by sections report. You can also push back the sizing to 3D in ACASIM by going to Rebuild option and clicking on Promote to 3D. You can see that the direction and the connections and the bends and the T's are intact in there, just so as I've said that the single line modes are only in the graphics. You can also create different kinds of views drawing views directly from this particular view. Here you can see I'm placing a drawing callout which is a plan callout to create a plan view. So I've placed the plan callout and to do that I have selected the seed and after placing I'm providing a name for the callout. I'm checking the scaling of the uh, drawing view that I'm going to create and once that is done I'll click on OK. When I click on OK you can see that within a matter of few moments the drawing view will be created and presented to me. Now in the plan that I've generated, the annotations will be shown automatically. You can edit them if you need. It will be generated automatically even for the single line method as well. Now, say that I need a section drawing. To do that, I can create a section drawing directly from this plan view. All I need to do is select the section callout and place the section callout just as I've done for the plan view. So I'm selecting the section callout here and placing the section callout. And for before placing, I need to select the seed. So I select the seed and I place the section callout. And after the callout is placed, I need to provide the name. I need to check the scales for the section view that I'm going to create. And after that, I click on OK. After I click on OK, within a matter of few moments, you can see that the section view will be generated and presented to me. In this view as well, you will see that the automatic annotations are applied. Now let's take a look on how you can simplify electrical design by using Ecosim Building Designer. In this example, I'll be using a ceiling grid and place a number of light fixtures on them. This will be placed in a grid format. By using the place symbol in grid tool and ceiling grid, you can easily place the light fixtures in a matter of seconds. Once all the parameters required are provided correctly and rechecked, Ecosim Building Designer will do the rest for you. As you can see here, I'm providing the start point. I've rechecked the parameters and I click on place symbols and you can see the light fixtures are placed along the grid automatically. This is one of the ways in which you can simplify your electrical design. You can also place multiple light fixtures along a definite path. By using the place symbol along path tool and selecting a definite path, you can easily place multiple light fixtures in a room. And you can see here, I'm going to place symbol along path tool and I've selected this path to be the path and I'll be placing a few number of spotlights along this path. When it comes to raceway or cable tray design, Ecosim can help you simplifying the design too. 
If you have your raceway path specified, you can use Converse Line tools to change the selected lines into raceways, provide the required raceway properties and preferences, and then you'll be just one click away from having the whole raceway designed. Here you can see I've selected the line and I'm selecting the system as a cable ladder which is made of steel, having a height of 4 inches and a width of 24 inches. Now I can also go into preferences and select the kind of bends and the straights that I want to place in this particular raceway. Once I click on OK, you can see that the whole line string will be converted into raceways. As you can see here, the 3D raceway is designed and it has its bends and other fittings provided as we have provided in the preferences. Now let's take a look on how you can simplify the energy analysis by using Acosim Building Designer. In this example, you can see that you can create your energy analysis report and for that you have to just select rooms. For this example, I have selected all the rooms and I have selected the type of the report that I want and the energy analysis legend, the color legend that I want to provide. You can see this report will be created in Excel. And in Excel, for each and every room, the load requirement and the load per unit area is given along with the number of fixture. Even the requirement for the entire building is given. You can also see that the ratings have been provided as specified by you in the previous steps. In a similar manner, you can generate an ASHRAE 90.1 report directly. All you need to do is select the number of rooms. Here, I have selected all the rooms and you can see that it's easy to create and it will be a few moments before the report is generated in Excel. You can see that the report is being generated and going on on top of your screen. You can see that for each of the rooms, the area, the number of fixtures and load requirements are given along with the requirements for all the building, but the rating legends in this case is as per ASHRAE 90.1. There you can see that the report is getting generated. There is the total and there is the rating as per ASHRAE 90.1. In this example, I'll be doing a solar exposure analysis. You can see that it's not very hard to do one. You can do the solar exposure analysis as a thumb rule for your design and you get the solar analysis result in a color-coded legend. As you can see that more towards the red is more the chance of solar exposure, whereas more towards the blue, the less will be the chance of solar exposure. The solar exposure color legend will be placed on the top right corner of your screen. Now I'll use this building, the building that you see currently, for a different type of energy analysis, which is known as the conceptual energy analysis. In this example, I'll be doing a conceptual energy analysis of the building shown previously, but I won't be using the exact same building here. I will use this kind of analysis to start my building design. So the most important and the very first information to give out here will be the project information. The project information comprises of two kinds of information. First one is the building information in which I provide the units, units format, the name of the project, the name of the engineer and the building. The second type is the most important because that's the location information and the heat intake is taken up based on the location information and the weather data of that location. Next, we have to provide the information for model creation. Here I am providing the glazing percentage as 0.3% global glazing. Then I'll provide the floor data. First, the number of floors, which is 5. Then the height of the floors, for which floor 0 is having a height of 24 feet. Floor 1 through 3 will have heights of 11 feet each. And floor 4 will have a height of 14 feet. Once that is provided, I'll go for external shading. External shading is also very important for energy analysis because the heat intake will be less when the external shading is provided. Now, we will go into model creation and we'll go deeper into external shading in a few moments. So now to create the model, the first thing I would do is create a slab for the floor zero, which has a height of 24 feet. Then after that, I will create another slab, which will have a height of 33 feet including the three floors from floor 1 through 3 and then a third slab for floor 4. After these slabs are created I will unite these three solids into one single solid so that Ecosim can understand that three solids are of a single building. Now after the unification I will click on this create building button and then I will select the unified solid. After the selection is done, you can see that on the left hand side of your screen, the rooms and the floors and the zones are being divided of this building real time. Now you can see that this solid 
looks almost like a real building, but this is a conceptual building which has the global glazing percentage provided, number of floors divided, and different heating zones are also divided inside of it. Now, if you go to calculations, you can see that we can also create ASHRAE RTS report directly from here. You can see that the summary result will be provided to you. You can also have a graph report in which let us concentrate on this graph, which is the heat intake due to glazing. Now, as I've said earlier, that the external shading also uh, accounts for the heat intake because the external shading without the external shading the heat intake will be high now to check that let's go to the properties of this particular building after going to the properties what I'll do is I'll uncheck the two check buttons which is consider shading from fins and consider shading from recesses and click on apply you can see that the total heat intake and the heat intake due to glazing spikes now, if I recheck those two boxes and click on apply, you can see that it comes back down to normal. Now, let's discuss on the advantages of using Ecosim for data management and reporting. In this example, I'll show you how you can place a table from the schedule that you have created in Ecosim Building Designer. I'll be placing this schedule inside this drawing sheet that I've created as a table. And you can see there, I have placed the table. Now, if I zoom into the table, you can see that I have all the columns as same as that of the schedule. Now, if I do some changes in the schedule, let's say I sort it in a different manner based on the uniform and description, you can see that the fixed furnishings will be at the top. Now, if I do a refresh from source, you can see that the table is refreshed and changed as per the schedule as well. Now, if I click on this table, you can see that all the table editing tools are as same as that of Microsoft Excel. So you'll have uh, all the same tools to edit this table. So it's easier to edit the table. Now to ch edit any cells, I just double click on the cell and you can see that I have the text of the shell there. Now if I select the cell and I can change the font height of the cell as well. I can change it to bold as well. If I click on any data point, the changes will be applied. I can provide any fill color to that as well. Now let's color code the contents of this table based on um, furnishing types, i.e. fixed furnishings or movable furnishings. Now, to provide a same color to the fixed furnishing cells, I select all the cells with fixed furnishings and I select the color I require to provide. Now, I do the same for the movable furnishings and you can see that I have color coded the table. Display rules are portable and can be stored in DGEN libraries and used on other models and drawings in the project or even shared with other projects. I have created a display style with a display rule to color code the interior non-rated firewalls as blue, the one hour rated walls in green and the interior two hour rated walls as red as you can see on your screen. The display rule also makes all the other building objects in the view display as light grey and semi-transparent. In the grocery building model, I have created a display style with a display rule to color code the interior non-rated firewalls as blue and the interior two hour rated walls as red. The display rule also make all the other building objects in the view display as light gray and semi-transparent. Another display style and display rule allow you to review the furniture, fixtures and equipment in the model based on the master format classification. The four classifications are refrigerated display equipment, restaurant furniture and custom retail furniture for fixtures and shelving units. The display rule has all the other elements in the model display as halftone while having the option for the remaining building elements not to appear at all when selected. Using Microsoft Excel Exchange system, you can manage, edit and customize your data faster and easier. The current example shows how the spaces properties can be edited in Excel and the information showed in the space label is automatically updated for some mechanical models. Let's go to the schedules and select the required module which we will want to change, i.e. diffusers. Whenever you go and select a particular diffuser, it will be highlighted in the view windows. Let's go to export option and choose export to Excel on the available drop-down menu. It will export the currently selected diffusers data to Excel. Once we are in Excel, we can modify the tabs of the diffusers in one go rather than manually selecting 
each and every diffuser and change all the required values. As you can see here, I'm changing the grill width from 24 to 26 and applying that same to all of them. I also change the grill depth from 24 to 20 and apply the same to all the other grills. Once that is done, I will save the Excel sheet and I'll go back to ACOSM Building Designer. And here, if I go to Excel Exchange and I click on Update from Excel and I select the exact Excel that I've just edited and saved, you can see that the Excel will be red. And once it is imported completely, you can see that the data will be imported and the sizes or the shapes of the diffusers are changed and also the grill width and grill depth in the schedule are changed as well. This will surely consume a less amount of time when you are editing a huge number of assets. In this example, I'll show you how easily you can export structural data from ACSM Building Designer to Microsoft Excel. To show you that, I start with the structural quantity report. Here, you can see that within the report, I have to begin the structural quantity report. Once the report is created, you can see that you have various kinds of summary, weight class definitions, and different other reports provided to you by this tool. Now, when I scroll down, you can see that there are a few beams which are rectangular, 8 by 12. If I select those beams only, you can see that there are only 8 selections. Now I'd like to create a selection set in ACSM Building Designer as well. To do that, I start a range and end the range. So my range is from 85 to 92. You can see in ACSM Building Designer as well, I have 8 selections done. If I do a display set, those 8 beams will be selected and shown to you. Now, let me say that I want to change those 8 by 12 beams to 12 by 18 beams. Now, once I've done that, I'll again have to update the range back to ACOSM Building Designer. Once that is done, I'll go back to ACOSM Building Designer. And if I select any one of the beams and go to the building element information of that particular beam by right pressing on that beam, you can see that in structural, the structural section name is 12 by 18. That means the change has been done. We can create, manage, and report building spaces and assets with spatial containment. We can place RFA content and allow users to move building assets while automatically locating what room or spaces the asset is in. This model is referencing a 2D CAD architectural background. In this section, I'll discuss how you can enhance your design using hypermodeling that you get from ACASIM Building Designer. Hypermodeling is a feature unique to Bentley's solution based on Power Platform technology. It basically aligns the drawings with the models in what we also call Media Fusion. Sometimes when people are working in 3D models, they only focus on the 3D parts. When they come to generate the deliverable, sometimes disconnection happens between where the 2D generated information actually occurs within the 3D models and misunderstand where a particular detail occurs. In this example, after creating a sheet view, we will select the sheet view and when click on open design model, it will directly go there. When in the design model, we can select the callout and toggle on or off clip model by the callout to get a clear view of that particular level. We can even go to the 3D model Model and select the callout and toggle the same to get how it will appear. We can even turn on or off annotations which will appear on the sheet. This is an integrated process facilitated automatically by the use of our user-friendly markers. Working with different file extensions is one of the most important capabilities of Ecosim Building Designer. We will use for our demonstration a fictional project of a water treatment plant expansion. This involves the expansion of the entire plant campus infrastructure. Therefore, the coordination and collaboration across the design teams is crucial. First, various disciplines from GIS to plant, building, road and bridge design are involved within this extension project and all of them use specific tools that use MicroStation as platform, enabling an interdisciplinary coordination with MicroStation's reference technology and its federated approach. So, the MicroStation platform and its DGN file format is a common modeling environment. But this isn't enough. A lot of data is created during the lifespan of this project, not just models, drawings and sheets and its revisions, but also images, sketches, procedures, specifications, you name it. Each project participant should have access to the right data at the right time and in the right format. Therefore, the workflows are needed to be supported and the data should be easily accessible and searchable. Therefore, a connected data environment as a collaboration platform is required, so it was important to use a common modeling and a common data environment. ACOSIM also integrates contents of multiple sizes, types and formats, like 3D OBJ file, SketchUp file, 3D Max file, Revit family, 
DWG DXF, GBXML, Energy Analysis, 3DM Rhino, and plain old MicroStation files. There is also an RFA wizard that can import RFA files. These files can be sunscreens, kiosks, etc. Any version back to 2010 Revit can be imported. We are agnostic to Revit versions. As I've already mentioned earlier, Acosim can use RFA in a version agnostic way and hence it has the biggest catalog of manufacturing content. A well-known method for structural interoperability is by using ISM. So what is ISM? ISM is basically a product or a framework or you can even say it's the philosophy that helps designers to exchange data, synchronize revisions, track progress, compare alternatives and publish deliverables. ISM is also Bentley standard for structural interoperability. It effortlessly integrates and exchanges information models across all ACO disciplines regardless of what tools and extensions are being used to support various organizational workflows and reuse existing data. This enables better and faster design and reduces time wasted on translation and rework. An iModel is created in a number of ways directly from any Bentley application, Rare application plugins, and there is one for Revit users as well as that of ProjectWise. iModel Composer, which is a desktop application that supports a wide range of formats used primarily for creating and merging iModels, and finally an open SDK for third-party developers to create iModels from their own application. When the iModels are composed, they are information-rich, multidiscipline, includes 2D, 3D geometry and data. Each iModel is knowledgeable, retaining a complete history of its origin, evolution or provenance, and each one is self-describing, which means that the source application features are not required to display or describe the rich information stored within. People can view this iModel through the help of Bentley Navigator, for contractors or vendors. In Bentley Navigator, you can select different disciplines in a particular iModel, for example, architecture, structure, or even plumbing. And in case of clients, we can follow the same method and generate 3D PDF so that the client can review the same. Based on the IFC facility management handover model view definition, COBE is an information exchange specification which captures data during design, construction, and commissioning for operations and management. Ecosim has an option for Kobe Excel spreadsheet, .ifc file, .ifc iModel, and also the option to export all three of these file formats at once. As I've said earlier, Ecosim Kobe output includes Kobe Excel spreadsheet, .ifc file, and can also publish a record IFC iModel. The spatial containment of objects are ruled by the flow height in the flow manager. For those of you involved in architecture, engineering, construction of buildings, Luminar T can significantly enhance the quality and impact of your bid and proposal presentations. You got some bright idea which you need to share with your client, Luxology would be a great tool for doing the same. These are a few examples of renderings done in Luminar T and Luxology. It has the ability to produce baked illumination of indoor spaces. You can leverage highly polished interior visualizations, but gain the added benefit of being able to walk through them in real time. Using Luminar T means you are rendering the entire space with high quality and can actually walk through them in real time to explore any facet of the design in more detail instantly. Of course, it has seamless integration with MicroStation and all products based on MicroStation platform like Ecosim Building Designer. You can easily create a view using daylight or artificial light in interior. While planning a city, you can do a flyover to understand the detailed possibilities of your design in daytime as well as in nighttime. You can use this flyover or walkthrough as per your requirements in different projects. The Connect Edition of Building Designer provides services to share data between Design Desktop, Bentley Cloud Connection Center and ProjectWise Cloud services for effective collaboration for people, data and projects. It provides you quick access to the Bentley communities and support for software downloads, license management, and service requests. The Connect Edition provides each connected user access to Connection Center. It provides access to personal learn material, parts, and history. It helps you keep connected to your projects. The Connection Center also provides file sharing with a personal share. From within Ecosim Building Designer, you can publish iModels and Adobe PDF files directly to your personal share. So, how does one learn to use Ecosim Building Designer? 
Actually, we have a number of options. You can learn at your own pace through on-demand options. You can watch video lectures, download hands-on workshops, watch SIG recordings. You can also have live interactions. You can attend a virtual classroom. You can attend a SIG. You can go to a physical event like a user group. You can get account-specific training. You can get live training through our channel partners or attend any one of the Bentley events globally. We have given our users many, many ways to learn. So where do you start? For that initial training though, we would always recommend one of the quick starts. These are offered both on demand as a self-paced recording or as a live virtual class with an instructor such as Mark Enos on Noel Page. These are hands-on classes that allow you to get familiar with the software in just a few short hours to be exact, six hours per discipline. The exercises are a complete workflow from starting a new project, modeling building elements and creating drawings and reports. A typical course from Bentley includes a practice workbook with step-by-step -step instruction and an assessment when you are finished. This should then be followed up with the fundamental training. With the Connect Edition, we are introducing Connect Advisor 1, the one-stop hub for personalized support and learning recommendations. It comes installed in Ecosim Building Designer Connect Edition. It's also available as an add-in for our VHI application. Connect Advisor offers a lot of advantages. You can learn interactively, discover live events, get personalized recommendations, interact with thousands of experts, and all are directly in product. So to sum it all up, using Ecosim Building Designer will help you to simplify your design, incorporate existing reality into your design, create architectural design with ease, integrate with computational design, create structural design faster than ever before, create MEP design in the most intuitive way possible, manage your data and create reports of all sorts, interoperate with vast file formats, visualize your design and stay connected. With that, we come to an end for today's discussion. Thank you again for your time and patience. 